So it's like if we're interfering with our own magnetic field, then some people yeah. think that the ELF is worse than the RF band. I'm probably of that it's mindset. Too. It's possible. Yeah. And so I've tested this in a Tesla because people will say, oh, a Tesla is bad because it's high EMF. And so you have to be technical. It's like, are you talking RF band or are you talking ELF? Are you talking magnetic or RF? Because guess what, guys? Any car you get in is going to have some RF EMF, even if it's not a magnetic. Uh, a, a gas powered car. It's just the motor itself. Is well, it's not, it's not, it's the motor, but it's also all the cars now have Wi Fi yeah. and RF uh, and Bluetooth. And so you're in your car, you are going to get RF EMF unquestionably, but it is the motor. But in a Tesla, you have a magnetic field from the motor. So Tesla, I think, has shielded their cars pretty well. And when I have tested newer Teslas, the magnetic field in a Tesla is not as bad as I thought it would be. It might be slightly higher than a gas powered car, but not significantly. Yeah. When I'm driving around in my car, which is a, in Miami, I, I have an Escalade, because I succumbed to the Miami thing and bought like a fancy car sort of, I don't know. It's like, it feels like too much to me. It doesn't feel like it's on brand, but it's it's the, it's only like 1.5 to two milligauss in my car. But if you put the, when you put the, the magnetic field meter at your feet in a Tesla, you'll get like seven to eight milligauss. Okay. But then you put it in like your crotch or like your hips and it's, really only like two to three milligauss in most Teslas. So it's not as bad as I thought. The magnetic field in a Tesla is not that bad. I haven't tested it in like a Rivian or any of the other electric cars, but before I would purchase an electric car, I would test the magnetic field in that car just to make sure you're not running around in like 10 to 20 milligauss. And well, this all sounds kind of esoteric, but yeah. No, but I mean like, how can this not impact our sleep? Right, like, I mean, it's just like, if we're talking about these other potential, like even more grandiose risks, how can it not be at least at a small scale impacting our sleep? And I mean, it's just, it, again, we've got to come back to the anecdote thing. It's like, you know, I have a place in Tahoe that's up at like, so like you're up at 7,000 feet, there's going to be more native EMF, right? Because you're like, you're, you're the atmosphere is thinner, native EMF, but like you're going to be away from more non-native EMF. Yeah. 